what's up everyone welcome back to you's time i'm tj <laughs> thank you for tuning in uh, today's just like a cause and effect kind of day uh just doing like some uh general uh like repairs just uh things to do that i need to do that i'm gonna do today and that involves uh the cam and crank position sensor and then also uh just like an air uh air uh filter uh meter right here uh the old one is cracked uh, and speaking of uh, like cause and effect, uh, like when I add the van, like wash to the drive-in, uh, one of the reasons why I don't like going through drive-in is just like all the like the high pressure water and everything else like that. But uh, water gets forced into places it probably isn't supposed to go. So uh, that's why I'm doing uh, the crank in the can position sensor uh, because, uh, a little quiet, uh, because uh, after getting uh, the vehicle washed, uh, the the, it was just uh it wasn't running rough but like it would shut off on me like i come to a stop metal light uh it would just shut off and check edge light came on uh so i ran the codes uh the code said uh the cam and crank position sensor uh like out of alignment it shouldn't be out of alignment if anything like it was working perfectly fine until i got it washed and like when i closed out that video like i drove out and like right when i was about to pull out the lot it shut off i'm like oh maybe it's just a fluke uh but like it's happened a couple more times so i got sensors i'm gonna replace the sensors uh that's what the truck was calling for but like if i was at a light and like i uh, just kind of like held like the throttle like it would stay running like it didn't feel like it was running rough or anything like that it still had like power uh but like it was just kind of like it's kind of like a ghost kind of symptom you know, and I think just moisture got in there. So, like, I'm just going to replace those sensors. And then a uh, cause and effect with uh, the Blackstone, the oil lab uh, results that we got, the oil analyst that we got back where it said there might be, uh, like, silicone from dirt. Uh, that could probably be from uh, that air filter meter. The one I have is cracked. It's missing, like, the reset top. So, like, it might be letting, like, dirt into the intake and getting air in after the air has already been metered so uh today is just one of those days where it's just like things that i need to do that i'm gonna do uh so i thought i'd bring you along for the journey of just doing the things that normally i probably just don't really show i just kind of just like do it but like let's keep you uh in the loop of like what's going on with the van so this is all part of the van the process of getting the van done uh so it's pretty quick uh you locate the sensor, and I'm going to show you the, the motor that I have. It's a 6.7 liters. The Cummins is an ISB. Uh, so uh, all these sensors, they're at the front of uh, the motor, which makes life easy and easy to get to. And also with the air filter meter, that's also easy to uh, get to and access. It's like uh, right there. And we're actually going to start with that because it's the easy, easy part. And like usually I start with uh, the hard part. You know, but like everything is uh, somewhat simple today. So like uh, it doesn't matter where I start. Uh, but like this right here just uh, lets you know like when your uh, air filter needs to be uh, replaced, like if it's clogged. And then also with like the truck wash, like my air uh, filter like intake is like right there in the front. So like it might have got some water in there and that kind of contributed to uh, it wanted to shut down and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so we're going <laughs> to replace that. We should have waited till the last minute. But uh, let's get going. Um, I'm going to just start with this. And then to remove those, I believe it's like a number five, like Allen key or something like that to remove that. And it's just popping the safety clips off. Uh, but I like, will get all that situated. I'm just going to show you like the locations of all of those lovely things. And right there, that's the meter. Uh, this is easy to remove. All you have to do is just unscrew it. Doesn't get much easier than that. And there's like a little O-ring, a little gasket in there. That should help seal that up. And like that feels fine. The little O-ring, I'm going to leave that on there. But uh, just so I can free up my hands. Uh, this is the old one. As you can see, like it might have like melted. It was hot. I did install like a turbo blanket to kind of keep heat under the hood down. Uh, but like being cracked like right there on the old one could have been letting dirt in. And like I'm not too sure uh, if that's actually sealing or that might be letting some air in also. Uh, but like this is the replacement. Uh, this is a Freightliner. This is GM. Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, the part numbers match up. 
Uh, so all you have to do is just uh, screw in the new one and we'll be done with that. And then also I'll be able to actually uh, know when my air filter is bad because like I wasn't able to like reset this one. Uh, so uh, it's just kind of like one of those uh, normal uh, maintenance items that you would just uh, change when you needed to change it. But uh, let's get the new one on and get onto uh, the cam and the crank position sensor. Just snug it up and make sure it's reset and that is done. And location wise, we have our cam sensor right there and then the crank sensor is right below that. Uh, so you just have to remove those uh, Allen keys. I believe that's a number five. Uh, unpop the clips like so, push it in and then unsnap it and it pops off like so and then just change those out so uh, let me get some tools and we'll get that changed out and finished all right before we get into the cam and the crank position sensor i decided to uh change out the o-ring that was on the air filter meter uh don't have do a job do it right if you're gonna do it uh that's the slacker part of me trying to come out and just skip a step but don't skip a step especially like if you have extra o-rings around like if you're in a pinch uh do what you have to do to get what you need done but uh don't forget to go back and fix it uh so we're matching it up uh so that o-ring should work that's a vitamin o-ring so we we'll just take that take this I would suggest a little oil, oil or a little spit, just to kind of keep the O-ring from pinching. And just uh, put this in my pocket. A little spit or a little oil to keep it from pinching. And then just uh, put it on and just make sure it doesn't get like rolled over itself once you do ha get it on there. like so and then like so and I have my Allen, I think it's number five. I believe that should be the right one. Yes, it's a number five. old new so assembly i moved the camera just so i could get room to pull this out this pull straight out but uh just make sure you put like a little bit of oil onto the new seal and assemble oil around a new seal to help assembly and disassembly and
pop the clip back on the plug. Make sure you lock it. And then you just repeat the same thing for the bottom one. Uh, the crank position sensor. Uh, they're the same part number. Same item, which is nice. And bada boom, bada bang. As soon as installed, it's finished, it's complete. The not so uh, glorious side of owning a vehicle and being able to work on your own stuff. People say, oh, you know, I work on stuff. It's fun. Not always fun. It's kind of a, a gift and a curse, you know, but uh, it's in, it's installed. It should be good. It's always good practice to keep the old parts you take off until you actually could do like a road test. And like, I usually keep them around for like a good couple weeks after like driving. Then like, I'll get rid of those. But uh, like they were working, like just weren't working like to the best of their ability. So like it's good to like hang on to them because like you never know you're gonna have like emergency. But like the sensors and like the little things are the things that'll get you. And uh, thankful, well thankfully I have like a scan tool. You know like it's nice OBD2. Just plug in and like just read the codes and it tells you like what exactly you need to replace. Uh, so you don't have to do like a lot of searching. You gotta try to figure out like, oh, why does it keep shutting off on me? Then you have to go like sensor to sensor and just try to figure it out. But I just plug it in, you know, like makes life easy. But like that stuff is done. Uh, this is like the norm for me. Like I usually don't like record like a lot of like stuff like that. But uh, just uh, for the process of it, like I'm still in between like a lot of like stuff in general <laughs> we're getting there but i do appreciate it so as you know cause and effect for every action there's a reaction and it's all about how you react so until next wednesday be mindful of how you react positive or negative the choice is yours peace tj